My name's Samantha, and I live in rural New Brunswick, and I forage. So this right here is broadleaf plantain. It's quite common. Um, one of the things I like about plantain, um, you can eat them at this stage. They're quite fibrous though, these long veins that run through it. Um, so you'll definitely want to eat this one cooked, um, but otherwise I typically harvest them when the leaves are much younger and tender. Um, but what's nice about it now, even when the leaves are getting big and crazy if you lift them, um, is the seeds. So the seeds, this one right here, this is a new plantain kind of stalk that it's putting up. This is one of the easy ways to identify it. Um, but otherwise, this right here, this one's coming close to when it'll go into seed. And those seeds are actually really delicious. And they're nice on salads, they're nice on teas, they're anything you would put a seed in that can go in. <laughs> this was picked now just over an hour ago, so it's a little sad with today's heat. Um, but this is lamb's quarter. And this is one that I will specifically dedicate a spot in my garden for, just because we love it. It's a very slow to bolt, um, I find equivalent for spinach. So spinach will bolt faster than the lamb's quarter will. But my favorite, one of my favorites is, this is a kind of a common ground sorrel. This one you just eat as you pick, at least I do. But this one's quite citrusy. Again, part of that has to do with the oxalates that are present, and it can have a little bit more of that grittier feel, again, as spinach can have. Um, I, I will put it in pestos and different sautés, um, but that one browns really quickly, so it's not always the prettiest when cooked. What else I have here is the violets. So a lot of people know violets more in the spring because they're easy to tell with their nice purple and white blossoms. Is they have a very easily identified leaf formation. Um, but one of the biggest things I tell people when they go to forage the violets is to first look for the flower because that's one of the easiest ways to tell that you have a, the true plant there. I have actually taken wild violet and put them in my garden because I really like this one when we saute greens and stuff. Another, just while I'm mentioning um, kind of forages that I've let kind of purposely stay on my property, um, clover leaves can get significantly big. And so I love clover. Um, it's in my tea. Red and white clover have many of the same benefits, although they have a little bit of their own specialties. Um, again, this one's a little limp from the heat today. And so again, with a lot of the greens that I mentioned are nice cooked, pestos are really nice. I'll also dry some and keep them for a bone broth and vegetable broth that I make during the winter. I'll pick these guys up now because they're starting to curl with the heat. Um, but even wild strawberries, the strawberries themselves are delicious. Um, but the leaves here, those are really nice added into teas again. And you can add small quantities into stir fries and pestos. And we have some stinging nettle here. As it dries, it will lose some of its sting. Um, and there are some of those who are adventurous and will consume it. Fresh, I do not recommend that. Um, but otherwise, as soon as it's picked, it starts to lose a lot of its sting. One that I don't use too often is yarrow, um, but this one does grow very commonly. Um, you just have to watch your consumption of this because of photosensitivity. So a high consumption in this can make you more sensitive to light. And this obviously flourishes in the summer and you don't want to be sensitive to light in the summer. Um, but this one I will sometimes dry and use in teas and different tinctures and decoctions. It has a very tight white cluster that'll grow up from the base. I did actually have this one, but it kind of got smushed. But here, and then you'll have larger leaves that will stem off from it. But you'll see them kind of pop up on your lawn if you're not keeping up on mowing. <laughs> And then another one that I now purposely grow in my garden is purslane, and that's because you can forage this wild, but I found it very hard to find wild. And I love this. It's the highest, they say, source of omega-3s naturally, so even higher than that of fiddleheads. Um, it's very succulent. If you guys want to try some, you can. Um, but otherwise, it's, it has a very succulent leaf. Not really fishy tasting, though. Um, and it's very, very nutrient dense. 
Another really nice one to forage right now is elderberry or the elderflower and um, berries will come in the fall. Um, but otherwise I have a very generous friend who has some acreage and she lets me harvest from hers. But I know that if you keep an eye out, even in New Brunswick, you can find some wild as well. And, um, but otherwise people might not want to tell you where it is, but <laughs> if you keep an eye out, you will find it. Um, the flowers are edible at this point, and so they make really nice teas. A lot of people use them in jellies and wines. This one's not one that I commonly harvest in the summer, but I just wanted to bring it as an example. Um, this right here is Usnia, and so this right here is a lichen. Old man's beard. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> that again. That was cute. <laughs> Old man's beard. So there we go. But um, otherwise, there are some lookalikes for this one, but I find the easiest way to tell it is if you grasp it, this one's drying out now. But if you grasp it, you'll see that there's a white cortex in it, and it's quite stringy. The other ones, once you grasp it, it just snaps. There's no white cortex. This one, I've put in baths in different um, kind of superficial solutions like salts and stuff like that, mostly in bath. Um, salts that I'll make, um, but otherwise this one I make a tincture for respiratory health. So this right here is Claytona, miner's lettuce, and this is another one that I specifically will kind of let wild in my garden. Um, I did put the seeds in there initially with intention at the beginning, but each year this one comes up on its own. We are coming into the heat of the summer, so it is going further into flower, and we'll be putting off seeds here soon and the leaves will go quite brown. So this one does not like the heat. This one again is something that you can forage wild, but I haven't really found it, so I let it go wild in my own garden. And we have some chickweed. A lot of people know chickweed. This one I found not quite flowering. They will have perpendicular leaves alternating one another. Um, there are some lookalikes actually. I know some people confuse both the purslane and the chickweed with spurge. And so it's just, again, that caution to make sure that when you are foraging, you are informed, you're educating yourself and um, asking for help. I know a lot of people will kind of pull back and not think to ask for help, but do not pick it. If you do not know 100%, it is what you need because spurge can be toxic in, in quantities. 